everybody, it's Steve and Chelsea Scott with Come Follow Me. Hi, you guys. Guys, we only have one section of scriptures today, but it's pretty darn good. This is a really good one. All right, today's right? lesson. It's so good. <laughs> we always say that. Jesus will gather his people. I think you guys would think if they didn't say it was the best section ever, there'd be something wrong but with this it. This is about the plan of salvation. That's why it's so important. It's, it's a so good, good one. Jesus will gather his people, Doctrine and Covenants, section 29, March the 22nd through the 28th. Mm -hmm. Two shout outs. Yes. Julia Jacobson, thank you so much. You made me this beautiful heart. She's an artist. And it's called Anne, like from Anne of Green Gables. What she doesn't know is my dad and my his family's from Prince Edward Island. And it just meant a ton to me. Thank you so much. And Raquel Alejo, I think that's how you say your last name. She always comments all you the time on our every videos. Time. We appreciate it so much. So, so here's your fist bump. For both of you. And your high five. Ba Bam. And your heart. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, grab your journals, your scriptures, and your scripture markers. Gotta grab the scriptures. It's time for us to connect up. We'll step aside, give you a screenshot. There you go. If you need the free handout as well as the download for today's whiteboard, I, I sometimes sing things. Just like that. The download. <laughs> then find it at thestevescott.com. Today's lesson. Let's give a little history here, shall we? Imagine for yourself that you are a new member to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's early 1800s. You've been surrounded by Pentecostal campfire meetings and churches and they're everywhere. The and, revival is Yes, and you have been taught about hell and heaven, damnation and blessings, and you've been taught this over and over and over and over in your life, and now the Lord gives section 29 in the Doctrine and Covenants, which reveals the plan of salvation in de some detail that hasn't been known in any other scripture. Right? Can you imagine? It's am it's amazing. Like all the truths and just it's just like this download for the people. I think there'd be a lot to process. So how this. how many of you read today's lesson section and you thought, you know, I didn't know that. That's brand new. Okay? <laughs> Maybe you did. That's okay. That's okay. Because now welcome to here. this. Yeah. So I want to be able to make it. We want to lay it out so it's easy to understand. So it makes sense so that you don't get in a panic. Because there could be, if you read section 29, there could be maybe a moment of like, panic! Right? But we don't want panic. We want to bring calm. Which I am not calm. But we want to bring this. Okay. So I want to have you write in your journal, write in your notes right now. The plan of salvation is about salvation. Not damnation. The plan of salvation, which means it's a plan of being saved. Now, you're going to read some things in here today, and you're going to think, how, Steve, does that have anything to do with being saved? And I think at the time, there was a lot of preaching about damnation and scaring people into turning to God. And I think for myself, if I said, like, apply this to my life, I would be more motivated by the positive aspects of the plan of salvation than the plan of damnation. So again, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation is not a stick to beat us to heaven with. No. This is an invitation. So I want to show you something. Open your scriptures. Let's go to Doctrine and Covenants section 29, verse 31 and 32. We want to lay some foundations while we do this, okay? This is what the Lord says in verse 31 and 32. For my... For by the power of my spirit created I them, yea, all things, both spiritual and temporal. First spiritual, secondly temporal, which is the beginning of my work. And again, first temporal and second spiritual, which is the last of my work. All things that Heavenly Father has created, all things that he does, are for our spiritual benefit and growth. True? Mm -hmm. You'll be happy to know that that means he created all things spiritually, including the whole world and everything that's on the world. So for Chelsea's happiness, trees have spirits. <laughs> you told them. I told everyone. You guys, here's a truth bomb. Sometimes when we go hiking or we go to the mall, 
I will find Chelsea literally hugging a tree. Come on, you guys do that, right? Some of you do that. It's perfectly there. normal. Please be a tree hugger. Tell me if you are. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm love getting, her. Like, red. Okay. <laughs> did I embarrass? I, she, I, she didn't. No, know I also did. name trees because I just love trees so much. You know. But and here's the point: the plan of salvation is a spiritual thing to help us to become more like God, who is spiritual. Um, and our physical bodies are meant to help us with our spirituality, and we in turn work together with those. All commandments are spiritually based. The plan of salvation, everything that we talk about, is spiritual based. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that that is clear, crystal clear before we start. That this is about moving the spiritual needle, so to speak, towards the celestial rather than to the natural and carnal. Mm -hmm. okay? I love that. You wanted to share verse 7. I did. And ye are called to bring to pass the gathering of my elect. For mine elect hear my voice and harden not their hearts. So my elect means anyone who chooses Christ. They are elect and they can hear the And voice. makes covenants. We have to include that. Yes. It's not just choosing Christ and saying, I believe in Christ. Well, it's, it's making covenants, right? Okay, well, if they can, but if they haven't had the opportunity, how does that work? Well, let's look at the footnotes. Israel, gathering of, mission of Latter-day Saints. Yeah. So for ordained ordination, we want to understand that the gathering in the elect, purpose of missionary work and the plan of salvation is to gather in the elect of Israel so that they can receive covenants and ordinances. That's why we have temples. That's why we have everything that we have. So that's an amazing part of this, mm -hmm. right? And they hear Christ's voice and they do not harden their hearts. That's a big one. That's huge. Yeah. So as we go through today's lesson, recognizing that it's spiritual, we have put... The plan of salvation from section 29 into seven specific areas, okay? Now, these are ones that you will find in your Come Follow Me for Individuals and Families, along with the most beautiful picture. We're going to post it. I, it's amazing. It is an amazing picture. It actually picture. gave me the chills. Like, it was just, like, so beautiful. You know what they'd say in Hawaii about that? What? They'd say, give me chicken skin, brah. Give me chicken skin. <laughs> All right? So... When we talk today, we want to center on Jesus Christ. This is the plan of salvation centers around Jesus Christ. And let's read verses 1 through 5. Okay? Mm -hmm. Listen to the voice of Jesus Christ, your Redeemer, the great I Am, whose arm of mercy hath atoned for your sins, who will gather his people, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, even as many will hearken to my voice and humble themselves before me, and call upon me in mighty prayer. Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, that at this time your sins are forgiven you. Therefore receive these things, but remember to sin no more, more, lest peril shall come upon you. Verily I say unto you, that ye are chosen out of the world to declare my gospel with the sound of rejoicing, as with the voice of a trump. You guys hear this? Lift up your hearts and be glad, for I am in your midst. And, and am your advocate with the Father, and it is His good will to give you the kingdom. So good. Mm -hmm. He's talking to all of us. I want you to circle a few words in verse 2. The word hearken, the word humble, and the word call. Say, the Lord says, even as a, I will gather you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, even as many as will hearken, humble, and call. So it's not, it's, there's conditions to the gathering. And I love, I love this because it just allows us to see that Jesus Christ, the whole purpose of the plan of salvation is to gather in, gather in and bring back. And this part in four, when he's saying, you're chosen out of the world to declare my gospel with the sound of rejoicing. This is a joyful thing. This is a joy. And we're sharing this joyful message with other people. Did I tell you about the guy on my mission? I gave a talk in church. First area on my mission in Eva Beach. Anyone here from Eva Beach, Hawaii? I was in Eva Beach and there was this older gentleman. His name was Brother Gray. And I gave a talk and Brother Gray, when I came down, he said, I must have looked very serious. And he said, Elder Scott, are you happy? And I was like, yeah. He's like, you better tell your face. And I was like, huh? And he goes, if you're happy and you know it, tell your face. And I was like, Oh, he's like, the gospel is a plan of happiness, rejoicing. If you're happy and you know it, tell your face. Mm, I like that. Okay? Yes. Maybe some parents are going to sing that to their children 
in the morning, they'll be like, if you're happy and you know what, tell your face. Psh, psh. All right, <laughs> let's do this. Okay, Jesus Christ is at the center. Now, we want to go pre-mortal life. We want to follow in this circular motion. Okay. So 36 and 37. And it came to pass that Adam, being tempted of the devil, for being the devil, the devil was okay, before wait, Adam. Wait, pause. Hold on. What? Just imagine if you had never heard this before. This is the first time as a saint that you okay. had heard this doctrine. Okay. Okay? Because all they heard was, Adam is bad. He ate the fruit. Okay, here we go. Okay. okay. And it came to pass that Adam, being tempted of the devil, for behold, the devil was before Adam, for he rebelled against me, saying, Give me thine honor, which is my power, and also a third part of the host of heaven, turned he away from me because of their agency. A third. Mm -hmm. So that even was like... That's a lot. Give you a glimpse into like the pre-mortal. And they were thrust down, and thus came the devil and his angels. And behold, there is a... Is this one? Yeah, keep going. Verse 7. And behold, there is a place prepared for them from the beginning, which place is hell. But that's telling you that there's a third of the hosts of heaven that didn't choose Christ. And that was something that happened before we came to this earth. They used their agency. They used their agency yeah. to choose something else. Mm -hmm. And hearing this for the first time, when we talk about heaven and hell, and we talk about the choices and, and the devil... This would be one of the first times we're like, wait, a third of the host of heaven? And also, hold on, before we came down here? So this is pre-existence where they go, well, I lived in heaven a long time ago. It is true. I lived there right? and loved there with people I know. So, so did you. So did you. And they go, what? And, <laughs> and a third of people were cast down. And we get this and they, so can we go, I have to read verse 39. And it must needs be that the devil should tempt the children of men, or they could not be agents unto themselves. For if they never could should have bitter, they could have not known the sweet. And we learn about the pre-existence and our choices to choose salvation. Mm -hmm. Did I miss anything? No. What 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 were you looking at? No, it just made me think um, it being agents unto themselves. Like so, this was the positive thing. This was the good thing, and. I think as a parent right now, because some of our kids are struggling, you know, we all struggle Teenagers. sometimes in our life, and that's normal, but it's important, like, I've, I've been praying for some of my kids, just really trying to find peace, and um, just understanding that it's so important for them to become their own agents and choose for themselves. It's such a powerful, um, well, not ordinance, understanding, like we need to understand that it's super important that we for ourselves have that ability and so do they, that the gift of agency. Beautiful. All right, let's go to creation. Remember, we are looking here for things that we don't know or perhaps the saints then did not know. So section 29, we're going to start in verse 31. Um, for my, for by the spirit, power of my spirit created I them, yea, all things both spiritual and temporal, First spiritually, second temporally. What am, what am I missing? No, keep reading. Okay. Okay. And again, first temporal and second spiritual, which is the last of my work. Guys, again, creation in the creative part of this earth and everything. It has, there's a spiritual nature to it. We can even make the reference, like there is one in, in Moses chapter 3 verse 5. Like you can make cross reference to Moses three five where Moses said the same thing that we that this is a spiritual work and it was a spiritual creation and my friends that we are to fill the measure of our creation mm. that means we are to live to our full potential of which we were created to do yeah that is powerful mm -hmm. that gives us power to salvation now. Why did Adam fall? So 40 and 41. Well, Adam fell that men might be. Wherefore, it came to pass that the devil tempted Adam, and he partook of the forbidden fruit and transgressed the commandment, wherein he became subject to the will of the devil, because he yielded unto temptation. Wherefore, I, the Lord God, caused that he should be cast out from the garden of Eden from my presence because of his transgression, wherein he became spiritually dead, which is the first death. Even that same death, which is the last death, which is spiritual, which shall be pronounced upon the wicked when I shall say, depart ye cursed. So, so that choice that he made. 
So we look at this and we go, some people would look at it in, in other ways and go, naughty, naughty Adam should not have eaten the fruit. But if Adam had not have partaken of the fruit, then he would have remained in the garden and he would have not known good and evil. There would have been no children. There would have been no progression. So if you think about that for yourself, okay, if you're going through life and you've made mistakes, you've, you've made some pretty pretty good mistakes in your life or choices and you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, why did I make that decision? Like, that was the worst. I was the worst for doing that or any of those things that might be coming up for you. Forgive yourself. Give yourself permission to apply the atonement in your life because those things that happened were important for your progression. And now where you're at right now, you have an understanding and that's why we have agency. So can I point out something just in the verse, verse 41? wherein he became spiritually dead. Can you underline that? And any time I do something contrary to the will of God, contrary to the commandments of God, remember things that are spiritual. When I transgress those things, I spiritually move myself away and remove myself from the presence of God. Mm -hmm. I do it. It's of my own choosing. Yeah. And every time I do it, but God provided ways for us knowing this pattern. So like why, what we chose here, why we were created, what happens when we make wrong decisions. And there's always a, les a lesson. So I always tell my kids, and this is something we say a lot. And my kids what, don't necessarily like this question What is the lesson? The what is my lesson? You're always asking, ask yourself when things come up, what is the lesson? What am I supposed to be learning? What is Heavenly Father trying to teach me? When you shift it into what is my lesson instead of like, woe is me, my life is terrible. You know, you're shifting it to more positive thinking. I then you're ready for that lesson. Yeah, but do you think that Adam and Eve, after they got removed from the garden, had the conversation with like, well, if you hadn't eaten the fruit, we wouldn't be in this mess. <laughs> no. No, I actually I think don't. they think, were grateful. I think they go, now I can. Um, now I can. Fulfill now the I measure of my creation. So let's go to filling the measure of creation. Let's go to mortality or mortal life. So we got 39, 42 through 45. So I will read 39, which we already did, but I'll do it again. And it must needs be that the devil should tempt the children of men, or they could not be agents unto themselves, which means the very thing that I love the most is my ability to choose. If the devil did not tempt me, I would not have that ability. Therefore, I have it, So, but I don't like him. Can, but, I, can I say something? And you know, no. And you know how you have some, some kids as a parent or... Okay, grandparents. I was joking, by the way. Okay. okay. I know. Okay. I know. It's all Just good. some people out there might not think that You're I was gonna joking. You're going to make me forget what I was going to say. Um, okay, you might have kids that are very strong-willed. Or you might be. Or you might be. And I always look at them as a child, like having a child that way. You're like, oh my gosh, as a parent, like seriously. But I know as I grow older, this is they're, they're literally wired to fight for their agency. We all are. Right? We all are. We all chose. Or for you're more of a pleaser, you got to learn the power of your agency. Okay. Okay. Verse 42. Let's go to verse 42. But behold, I say unto you that I, the Lord God, gave unto Adam and unto his seed that they should not die as to the temporal death, even as I, the Lord, should send forth angels to declare unto them repentance and redemption through faith on the name of mine only begotten Son. And thus did I, the Lord God, appoint unto man the days of his probation, that by his natural death he might be raised to immortality, even unto eternal life, even as many as would believe. And they that, that believe not unto eternal damnation, for they cannot be redeemed from their spiritual fall, because they repented not. For they love darkness rather than light, and their deeds are evil, and they receive their wages of whom they list to obey." There is choice. So as the temptation comes, we also have a choice. As I choose God, as I choose obedience, as I choose righteousness, I am endowed with power from on high. I mean, the Holy Ghost can then be with me and I can receive line upon line, precept upon precept, and I can grow mm -hmm. with that. I'm going to choose Christ. And Christ... And the plan of salvation. When, well, when I am tempted and I choose wrong, I choose wrong... I can also choose Christ. Now, teenagers, lest you be listening to me. Notice I use the scriptural word, lest. Um, lest you shall be listening to me and think, therefore, I can do planned repentance. Sin now, pay later. Okay? It's like Satan's drive-thru. 
Okay? Bad news. This is not what we're talking about. But for those who choose Christ, and knowing that we make mistakes, we can repent. Again, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus is the Christ. And the reason why that they were not redeemed, look in verse 44, underline the part, because they repented not. It was their choice. But then on the positive side, when you repent and choose Christ, then all things will be brought to you. Like you'll be able to re have this plan of salvation, be able to apply the atonement and have that healing gift that the Savior has given to us. And ultimately, yeah. eternal life, right? That's, a, that's our goal. Chelsea's middle name should be Hope because she <laughs> loves hope. And, and the expectation that comes through the atonement. Really, because that's that's the happiness. So let's do the atonement of Jesus Christ. I'm going to step yeah. aside so that they can see it. Okay? So. 1, 42 through 43. Okay? So let's go to 1. Listen to the voice of Jesus Christ, your Redeemer, the great I Am, whose arm of mercy hath atoned for your sins. Isn't that do beautiful? We and we, did, we just did 42 and 43. But can I just read this? One more time. Woe, this is two. Who? Who, not woe, who will gather his people even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, even as many as will hearken to my voice and humble themselves before me and call upon me mighty prayer before Can we go to five? Did you want to read those ones? You can do whatever you want. It's just so good. Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you that at this time your sins are forgiven you, therefore you receive these things, but remember to sin no more. Thus peril should come upon you. Verily I say unto you that ye are chosen out of the world to declare my gospel. 5. Lift up your hearts and be glad, for I am in your midst, and I am your advocate with the Father, and it is his good will to give you the kingdom. Can I can I just talk about being an advocate? Did, oh, no, go ahead. Oh, yeah. You share your thought. No, um, I just love it. Being an advocate. There comes a point in each of our life where we we need someone to advocate for us meaning to stand and, and um, cheer us on. And to, I can just imagine standing before my Heavenly Father and knowing, knowing things that I've done and not being able to be forgiven without Christ and Him to stand as an advocate and say, He, he was good. He, I, I atoned. And um, his heart is right. And will you let him in? Um, he's chosen me. And I've chosen him out of this world. Will you let him in? He advocates for us. He advocates our goodness and our greatness and our potential and all the, the good that is inside us in this plan of salvation. He is the key in this whole plan. of, And the, the other key is us choosing him to advocate for us. A man who, like Christ, who knows all of my sins, who knows all of my thoughts and my words and my deeds and my intentions. He knows them all. I can't hide them from him. And yet he still will advocate for me every time that I choose him. In the, in the imagery of the hen gathering the chicken under her wings, is like, I, I can't imagine that there would be like this little chick that you'd be like, no, you're not allowed in because you're, you got a little dirt on you or whatever. Like the hen is just going to gather in. There's going to be no um, repel like no repelling or like not allowing that love to go to that chick. You know, he, the hen's going to gather. As long in. as that chick wants to be gathered in. Yeah. The choice is the chicks, but it's like turning and, and, and coming. Like it's coming to be gathered in. Um, the army is going to go over. There was some teenage boy in this video right now that heard you say the word chick, and he was like, oh, <laughs> wrong chick, Buster. It's not what we're talking about. Okay, let's do resurrection. Let's talk resurrection, because this is a doctrine that is just, oh, okay? Especially for those who are in the golden years of life. And, um, and, his, and a lot of you guys have also shared that you've lost your spouses lately. So, um... And you found our channel, and this has been helpful for you. So we want to give you guys lots of love and share love with you because we're so grateful that you're here with us. And we know you know a lot of good stuff, and you have a lot of wisdom. So let me let me share something personal. Um, we found out of, 
a little while ago that my dad um, doesn't have long to live. Um, he has non-alcoholic liver cirrhosis. And I was having a conversation with my mom, and my mom was having a hard day. And my dad was having a hard day. And, um, and I said to, my mom made the statement, she said, I don't want to lose your dad. And I said, if it's about loss, like losing someone forever, then what are we doing? This is a plan of salvation. This is part of the steps. This is what happens. That does not make it easy. That does not make it easy for anyone who has loss or we mourn those who have passed on. But this doctrine of the resurrection stands firm. And when I go, um, I always say that there's two moments in life that will give you a reality to check. Number one is holding the hand of a new baby just recently born. Everyone should be able to experience that and recognize the power of life. And the other is to hold someone's hand as they die and they pass on. Um, I've done both and I felt the spirit on both ends of life. And I know that there is... There's power beyond the grave. And this doctrine of the resurrection, when he says, For the trump shall sound both long and loud, even as upon Mount Sinai, and on all the earth shall quake, and they that shall come forth, yea, even the dead which died in me to receive a crown of righteousness, um, and be clothed upon, even as I am, to be with me, that we may be one. So that's 12 and 13. 12, right? 12. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is powerful because we are being raised up. Raised up and become like him. Like crown of righteousness, clothed in glory, um, being with him. That this is salvation and the plan of salvation. And I hope everyone who's listening to this can feel that scripture. That is a powerful scripture and it gives you so much hope. And um, gratitude, I think, for what what is our opportunities if we choose Christ and we continue to do the things to repent and apply the atonement and, and keep going. Get up again. Okay, verse 26 says, And behold, I say unto you, behold, before the earth and shall pass away, Michael, mine archangel, who is Adam, right, shall sound his trump, and then shall all the dead awake, for their graves shall be opened, and they shall come forth. Yea, even all. That is glorious to hear. Mm -hmm. And um, that would be such a powerful thing to learn. That will be. Oh, at that moment for them? Sorry. Well, even, I mean, it's, maybe we just take it for granted because we, we've heard this. Or maybe this is brand new to you. But it's such a powerful message that we will all be resurrected and we will come forth. And like that picture again, look at that picture from this week's Come Follow Me. Like, the Savior will be there and every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is the Christ. Every, everyone will kneel and know it is him. That will be a glorious day. So when we look at the resurrection, then we get to final judgment. Might I pause here and just say that I did not put the second coming signs in here. Some of you might be watching this video and be like, when's he going to talk about the signs of the second coming? And I haven't put them in here, but I mean, they're, they're in, there. in there and you can write them down. Why are they there? To turn our spirits to Christ. Mm -hmm. To turn. To recognize that when I see this, I will know that he is coming. And for those that need a little bit of a wake-up call, that they go, oh my goodness, the time is now. But I mean, and kids will like it. Seminary kids love it when it's like, the moon will be dark and like, but if we just go through this lesson and we list all the signs of the second coming and we miss the whole spiritual nature and all we do is focus on that one tiny little aspect of the second coming in the whole plan of salvation, then we'll miss all this beautiful part on the outside. It'd be like seeing a tree and missing the whole forest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can do it. It's fun. But let's do um, the last one, which is final judgment. 12 through 13. I'll read it. It's the final countdown. Um, didn't you just read that? We did read it, but I just, <laughs> I also wanted to sing the song. Let's go to 27, 27. 27 through 30. Okay. okay. I'll read it. And the righteous shall be gathered on my right hand unto eternal life. Period. Stop. Highlight. Underlined. Read it one more time. Glowing. Glowing. Light. Sparkling. Shining. All right, go. 
And the righteous shall be gathered on my right hand unto eternal life. Boom. And the wicked on my left hand will I be ashamed to own before the Father. Wherefore I will say unto them, Depart from me, ye cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and angels. Now behold, I say unto you, Never at any time have I declared from mine own mouth that they should not that they should return. For where I am, where I am, they cannot come, for they no, have no power. But remember that all my judgments are not given unto men, and as the words have gone forth out of my mouth, even so shall they be fulfilled. And that last, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first in all things whatsoever I have created by the word of my power, which is the power of my spirit. Boom! Amen. Now, some people might be fearful at that and go, oh my goodness. It's not too late. No, the power is in us that we might be agents unto ourselves. And underneath right here, I said, I just wrote, am I choosing salvation? Am I choosing salvation? It's up to me. I can choose Christ. Oh, we forgot to talk about um, men are that they might have joy. Well, let's do it right Adam now. Because so, you have a question right here. So this was part of this section, but it was like, how can I create, because we are powerful creators, opportunities to feel to feel joy in my life? So like a second Nephi 225, men are that they might have joy. We're here to have joy. This is part of the plan of salvation. Okay, so if you're not feeling joy, there's ways to feel joy, but you need to create them. What makes you feel joy? Okay, how can I make old things become new in my own life is another one. Okay, did we even get to that part? How do I allow myself to be gathered? We just this have is a lot the, this going is on. The, this is the last one. <laughs> we have like a lot of thoughts here. But so there's some journal questions for you. Joyful, joyful. Oh, let's go. Let's go to this one. Okay. Because... This and and we were gonna touch on this one yes, we when we talked about old things becoming new. Let's talk about that. Okay, so when we're talking about old things becoming new, hmm. okay, verse twenty four. For all old things shall pass away, and all things shall become new, even as the heaven and the earth and all the fullness thereof, both men and beast, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea. Old things becoming new. That is the whole point of the plan of salvation, is that we it's out with the old and in with the new, meaning that we become new creatures in Christ. Mm -hmm. We fill the measure of our creation. Mm -hmm. Our spiritual nature is fulfilled. And are you? A, what are the old things in your life that you need to let go of so that you can bring in the new? Make this lesson a New Year's resolution. Okay, make it a resolution to be gathered. To choose to be gathered. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to be gathered. I, I've said it before. Like The, the Lord's not going to be standing at a gate being like, you were so close. Pull the lever! <laughs> One right. check mark away. Oh, I was so close! <laughs> um, the Lord will be gathering in those whom he has called and, who they, and they have chosen him. I choose Christ. Mm -hmm. I love Christ. It talks about, in my patriarchal blessing, just a little bit, um, it talks about when the Savior comes again and um, being in the crowd and being able to hear my name be called and worship him and go to his feet. And every time I read it, it makes me weepy because I'm so grateful. Um, and it helps me to remember um, who I am. And the ultimate goal is to turn to the Savior again and again every day. And there's a song that I love that I listen to all the time. It's by Hillary Weeks. It's called When He Calls My Name. Go look it up. And it is so, so beautiful. And it will help you as well. Remember who you are as you peel the layers and the scales off of the things that you might be believing that are that are not helpful in your life. It could be culturally. It could be generationally. Any of those things that do not align with the gospel of Jesus Christ and what we believe as we shed those things and we make old things become new, we will we will feel this powerful um, healing in our lives and be able to share the gospel and spread this amazing plan of salvation and so others can feel the joy that we feel. I can just imagine in, in heaven that we cheered for this. We cheered. We cheered. And we were like, yes! We cheered and then we fought for it and we believed in it and we chose it. 
And we get here and we come here again and we get to choose it again. We get to cheer about it and like shout it from the rooftops and share Hallelujah. it with others. Like, can I have an yes. amen? Hallelujah, guys. And it's so good. <laughs> So as you study this week, I hope you feel that and you're really good. Hosanna. And what does Hosanna mean? Hosanna is that kind of the same it's word? It's like a prayer for. Hosanna. Like, yeah. But that is, it's amazing. Now, what I want to be able to do right now is have you with the word of the week. Thank you to everyone who stays to the end. Our word of the week is gather. Okay. Gather and put it in the comment section down below. Please put where you're from. Interact with us, comment, we love hi. say hi. We love you. You know that. We love you. We pray for you every day. We love you and we're so grateful that you're watching with us and you are participating. We love that even more. Thank you for all that you're doing. So we will see you guys again next week. We will. Love you. Bye. Bye guys. <laughs>